High performance wireless gaming mice are now affordable with the Damo Shark M3. With a low cost price, you might think it comes with low cost features, quality, and performance. But what if? It didn't. Could a mouse that costs so little compete with mice that cost so much? Comparing this low cost mouse to ones that cost up to $160 is surely unfair, but I'm doing it anyway. For the low price that you pay, the mouse comes with some spare mouse feet and a sticker. You know what mouse didn't come with spare mouse feet? My death had a V3 Pro, which cost $150. The packaging in this is very light with no major waste, unlike my HTS Pro 4K, which cost $100. $150 as well. This mouse is also available in the colour known as Camel, unlike my other expensive mice which are not available in Camel. This puts the Damo Shark M3 as the clear winner, but for fairness I'll look at the quality, performance and comfort as well. One of the main things that cheaper mice consistently fall behind against the more expensive versions is the quality. Let's test it by squeezing the life out of it. The Dermo Shark M3 doesn't give in. There is a section underneath the side buttons where applying some significant pressure, and I mean significant, this isn't realistically reproducible in game, you can trigger both of the side buttons. Around the rest of the mouse though, everything is pretty strong with no obvious areas that could fall apart within a few months. This thing also weighs 58 grams, so it even achieves a lightweight design without it feeling like the cheap price. So at the moment, the quality of this mouse matches some of the highest priced mice available, but we have just started. Interestingly, the switches for this mouse have changed. They were using KLGM 8.0s and are now using TTC Gold switches. I don't know which ones mine actually have because I'm not a nerd, but as far as I know, if you do buy one right now using the link in the description, you should get the TTC Gold switches. Regardless of what I have, the quality of all the buttons or switches is very high. This is using the new 3395 sensor, which features in many high-end gaming mice, with the exception of a few that are stuck in the past. The other internals are a bit different compared to the big boys, so it's not all leading technology. I won't go deep into this part as I know that most viewers of this channel are nerds. Playing with this has been amazing, with no noticeable issues with performance. I've been using it with my Razer Atlas pad, which I just love now. Anyway, this mouse has been great to play with. It certainly performs as well as the expensive mice. And one of the other great things about this mouse has been the shape. This is similar to some popular ambidextrous mice, such as the Viper V2 Pro, Glorious Model O, and the Pulsefire Haste. The main difference I feel with this is there is a lot of flair on the top end of the mouse. For my palm grip, it's great. I spent the past week playing Diablo 4 like a degenerate goblin and sometimes, due to my rapidly aging body that is slowly failing me as I find myself on a journey that inevitably ends in death, I do notice a bit of stiffness on my wrist or fingers. But with this mouse, there's been none of that. I can play for hours and waste my life without being brought back to reality. For those that use fingertip or claw grip, it might be a miss depending on finger placement. This mouse is a bit bigger than a super light, with this one being 129mm long, 66mm wide, and 39mm tall approximately. So once again, this mouse is keeping up to the same level as the expensive flagships. There's got to be a point where it trips up, or it means that we are all spending $150 on pieces of plastic that are no better than a mouse that costs $50. Oh no. And you even get software for it, which is quite hard to find. I got a link from the AliExpress page, which was a bit risky, but looked legit enough. My PC hasn't locked up and demanded 200 Doge coins from me, so I guess it's safe. And she can do all the important things on it. Change DPI, check battery life, macros, turn on motion sync, and it even has eSports mode, which does something or nothing. There's also a pretty low resource program as well, so it even beats Razer Synapse and the Asus Armoury crate easily. So back to the price. I paid about $45 for this. AliExpress has this listed with a 45% discount, 
and that hasn't gone away every single time I've checked. So it's safe to say that you can probably get it as low as that as well. And honestly, this is the best value for money mouse that I think I have ever used. I think maybe the only downside to this M3 could be how the quality of the mouse holds up over time. I don't think there's a warranty that comes with it when you buy it from AliExpress. There is a buyer guarantee of 90 days, so if it arrives not as described, you can go through the process of getting a refund, but nothing that protects your purchase from faults beyond that. If you buy it from a different supplier though, then you might get some warranty that way, but the cost will be different. For me, this is a strong recommendation. It's the strongest recommendation that I can give. Getting something that could perform really well at such a low price is incredible. And from my experience, it matches the quality, performance and comfort of some of the highest tier mice I have used. There are some areas that can be improved, a better coating would be a plus, but I find that what it has now is great for me. And I'd also prefer the buttons to not go over the sides and that's it. Regardless, this feels like a high quality mouse that could cost $100, but is only half of that. So honestly, just buy it, but make sure you get it in camel. I recently reviewed the Zowie EC3CW. It's on screen now, you should watch it. And then you can compare these two together. I know which one wins.